Hey, what's up guys? This is the TP-Link Archer AX73. I'm gonna unbox this thing, I'm gonna do some speed tests, I'm also gonna do some range tests, and I'm gonna use my Pixel 5, which is my Wi-Fi 5 device. I'm also gonna be using my iPhone 12 Pro, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device. So I'm gonna give you guys all those numbers, so stick around to the end to find out. Now this is a Wi-Fi 6 router and it is backwards compatible, that's why I'm using both phones. And it has a fairly fast speed rating of AX5400 for a dual band system. Pretty much all the fancy stuff saying it's very fast, backwards compatible, it has network protection. It also has parental controls so you could limit devices on how much to use or you can turn them off. It also has a USB so you can actually plug in your hard drive, your external hard drive and share it. Okay, so how to update drivers and stuff, quick installation guide, probably showing you how to connect them and stuff. Yeah, there's a how to connect this to your modem. This one's usually pretty straightforward. You just connect this straight to your modem through the WAN port and the other ports you can just connect your other devices. So this thing has six antennas. And antenna directions actually matter for routers. So if you point them in different directions, you might gain or lose Wi-Fi coverage depending on that. So usually when they put more antennas, that's all also a good thing. This is actually very similar to the AX21, which I've reviewed. And I can do a comparison video in another video if you guys are interested in that. But you can see it's actually much bigger than the 21. It's actually much bigger. And it's also thicker too, just as a comparison. When we look at it, it's also thicker as well. Okay, so if we look at this, we could see that it has the WAN port right here. It has the four uh, Ethernet ports that you can hook up to other devices. You have your power. There's a power button, so you don't necessarily have to uh, unplug it if you want to reset it. And there's a Wi-Fi button here, which I'm not exactly sure what that does. The WPS is to easily connect devices in your LEDs for, you know, to turn on the lights and not. Maybe Wi-Fi is to disable the Wi-Fi? I'm not sure, I'll, I'll find out. And there's a little reset button for factory resetting. Let's see what else is in the box. So you get a ethernet cable, and this is CAT5e, which does support gigabit. Granted, it would be nicer if they gave you CAT6. It is 100 to 240 volts for the power supply. And that's pretty much it. It's been a few weeks since I've unboxed this thing and no issues whatsoever in terms of no drop connections or any of my Wi-Fi devices having trouble connecting, even my smart home devices that connect on the 2.4 gigahertz. No issues whatsoever, which is what I would expect. Okay, so I did speed tests, I did range tests. I have all those numbers here, starting with the speed test. So for the speed test, my internet is rated at 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So when I do the speed test with my computer, which is hooked up via ethernet, I do get those full speeds. So good there. With my Wi-Fi 6 device, the iPhone 12 Pro, I get 540 megabits per second down and 339 up. And with the Pixel 5, which is my Wi-Fi 5 device, I get 472 down and 279 up. So you could tell on Wi-Fi there is a speed reduction. Now, different Wi-Fi devices have different strengths. So if you get one of the newer laptops that have, you know, Wi-Fi 6 and they have the 4x4 MIMO, then you could potentially get faster speeds. Then I went to a local speed test server, which my computer essentially becomes the server itself. So I no longer need to go to the internet to do a speed test. So my phone goes to the router, which is then hooked up to my computer. And with that, I'm isolating the router. So that gives a more accurate representation of what the router is capable of. I got 895 down and 650 up with the iPhone, and I got 674 down, 493 up with the Pixel 5. So you can see there's a huge increase in speed, and that's because I'm taking away those two extra variables, which is basically my internet service provider 
and the public speed test server. Range test time. Now I'm still using the same local speed test server and I'm just walking away farther and farther. I eventually go outside and across the street and stuff and I'm doing speed tests. Now range can vary based on location. It really depends on how many walls you have, if they're thick walls, if you're between floors, if you're in a building with other interference like other people with that have other routers and stuff. So all of that stuff can hurt your range. So I'm in a more open area now. I moved a few months back so I can get a little more range than I would typically get in my last place. At 20 feet, there wasn't too much of a drop in speeds in the Wi-Fi 6. There was a bit more in the Wi-Fi 5 as a drop. At 50 feet away, this is when I go outside my place. There are a few walls, a few stucco walls. And you could start seeing that, I mean, even earlier on, you could see that the Wi-Fi 6 is really much more capable because this is a Wi-Fi 6 router. As you go farther and farther away, you could really see a difference between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 5. Essentially, they both make it all the way up to 180 feet, which is pretty impressive. Now, I try to walk a little more past this, but it was starting to cut in and out. So comfortably, I would say 180 feet. Maybe you could do a little bit more. If you go to 192.168.0.1 on a browser, you do get access to the router and its settings and stuff. You can also access the settings via the Tether app, both available on the Play Store and the App Store. So you're good to go and it's a very clean, nice interface. It doesn't have as many options as you would on an ASUS device. For some reason, ASUS, from all the routers and mesh Wi-Fi's I've tested, ASUS seems to have a ton of options. Uh, this one has more than enough for, in my mind, I would say a lot of people. It has more than enough options for me. I can safely say that. Okay, you do get parental controls which are included in the price so you could schedule time, you could turn off devices, you can turn off uh, certain devices from having internet access and stuff so you can do that. And you can also schedule to turn off your entire wireless networks. You can hold this Wi-Fi button for two seconds, which will do the same thing. I'll turn off the Wi-Fi access and you hold it for two seconds, it'll go back on. Okay, and it has USB 3.0 port, which you can use for file sharing. So you could hook up a flash drive or an external hard drive here. You can also use that as the time machine to back up your Mac settings. If you got this router, you know, you had pretty good coverage, but on the other side of your house, you didn't have that great of a coverage and you wanted to boost that, you could get a compatible TP-Link device that supports one mesh, basically get another one of these routers or an extender or some other variant of that. And it can actually act as a mesh system. You can also use this router as an access point rather than a router and you can again separate the bands the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz you can also do that in uh, guest mode so if you make a guest wi-fi you can do that as well and it's pretty easy to share the guest wi-fi as well so you go to on the tether app you go to this option and it shows a qr code and someone would just scan that with their phone and they would have access to your network essentially it's kind of a super cool convenient wps button okay but other than that i think for the price you're getting a solid router so i would definitely recommend this i like this router it looks nice i had no issues connecting to it it has a very nice interface it gives you a decent amount of options and good to go if you guys enjoyed this video smash that subscribe button if you guys have any questions or comments let me know in the comment sections below as always thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.